Hello everyone and welcome to another video with me 320 Simpilot and today we're taking a look at another challenging approach. This time it's the Skiathos Runway 01. This is a Greek island, it's a famous approach because it has this fantastic uh, threshold which is right next to a public road and as you can see there's some spotters there with their cameras taking a look. It's known as the St Martin of Europe, uh, obviously Princess Giuliana a lot of you will remember from uh, from various Microsoft Flight Simulator games and also all the YouTube videos and Skiathos has the same sort of effect where you end up approaching very low over the road to land on this short and narrow runway so it's often a captain's only sort of airport depending on the airline and of course depending on the size of aircraft you're bringing in here but it can accommodate up to 767 aircraft but obviously it, uh, it does have a few limitations on that if you try to do that. It's an interesting approach, it's unusual in a few ways, uh, mostly because we're going to fly the approach from a beacon on another island before converting uh, and turning around the corner to face back into this island uh, to land in on this runway. So you, you end up flying uh, off of two different beacons to fly one sort of approach, which is quite unusual, and it makes for an interesting approach. So today we're going to look at how we can do it. It's quite straightforward really, but there are some, some tips and tricks hopefully we can go through today. Uh, this is not a definitive guide on how to fly into Skiathos, this is very much not for any real world use. I am a real world Airbus pilot but this is just to give you some extra context and hopefully help you out if you wanted to fly this approach. We'll also be using the new Orbex scenery, so thank you to Orbex for sending that over. This was released on the 5th of November, so uh, just, just one day ago from when I'm recording this video. And it's a really um, impressive package full of scenery including the details such as these uh, these plane spotters sitting here getting ready to get jet blasted as we head off. Um, so we'll take off in a moment we'll fly the approach and talk about how we're going to do that and then we'll do a bit of exploring of the scenery so let's get started before we get started i'd just like to mention in case you haven't seen it we have a new partnership with apex gaming pcs with me they've created a line of specific 320 sim pilot computers we have the bus and the manta both with excellent cpus which you can then customize on the website that apex will build and ship it to you use the code 320 sim pilot to get a five percent discount and you'll also be supporting the channel as well so whilst we're on departure here, I just want to show you what we're going to do. So we've departed from Skiathos over here, and uh, to make the approach, we're going to land back in on the runway on the other end. So to do that, we actually have to make the approach from a VOR based on this island. We're going to head outbound over the water where we descend, and then we turn around the corner and point back in towards an NDB on this island. So don't worry, I'll explain what they all are as we do it. Um, there is an easy way to do it as well, which I'll also show you uh, to, to make life easy if you don't want to use the, the needle tracking. But there you go, so we're going to fly out and back in. Now today is lovely weather, but you can fly this in uh, relatively bad weather with a cloud base of about 2,000 feet. Uh, we're well above that at the moment, so we wouldn't be able to see anything, but we could still begin this approach. So let's uh, jump into it. So this is the approach in chart form. It's the LG SK Skiathos Locator Runway 01. And as I said, it's quite unusual. Here is the Skiathos airport that we departed from and as you can see uh, on its own island with quite a high uh, hill on the side of it we're actually going to start the approach from this island next door from this VOR, the Skopelos VOR. We're going to fly towards this VOR, we could enter the hold but we're going to skip that today uh, and then you can fly the procedure. So we're going to head from the north down, we're going to go over the VOR and then we're going to head outbound from the VOR on the 203 radial. If you don't know what I'm talking about with radials, then I do have a video on radials and tracking in uh, on the channel, so I'll provide a link to that. So we will head outbound on the 203, then we'll turn at 10 miles back inbound and track 008 degrees in towards the NDB, the Skiathos NDB, and that's what's unusual, heading out on a VOR just to point back in on an NDB. So it is really an NDB approach. Uh, and it will be listed as such in the FMS. But there we go. So head out, 10 miles, turn back around and point in. Sounds pretty straightforward, but there's a couple of things about it. First of all, this outbound leg actually starts at 4,000 feet because of the terrain on this island means we have to begin the approach from 4,000 feet. As you can see, there's this three mile point. So we head outbound from the VOR, 4,000 feet, but we don't descend until three miles away. Once we're three miles away from the VOR, so that's this point here, we can then descend down to 2,000 feet. So we'll be descending to 2,000 feet on this leg out to 10 miles. After 10 miles, we make our right turn. Maximum speed 185, which is very common for this sort of procedure, will be much slower than that. We'll turn back in and intercept the 008 inbound. Now, once we are turned back in, or once we pass 10 miles outbound, we can descend down to 1,600 feet, which is our minima. It's not a continuous descent final approach. It does say that clearly here. So we will descend to 1,600 feet, and then we'll actually level off. 
Once we level off there, we'll head to FQ01, which is effectively the missed approach point. If we reach this point, which is here, if we reach that point and we haven't managed to see the runway, we will go around and we'll fly the missed approach, which is quite straightforward actually. It's quite a decent missed approach. If we are visual, we will then from that point start a three degree descent in towards the runway and land. Nothing unusual about that. But we do find that, of course, as we said, the runway is quite short when we get there uh, and also quite narrow, which leads to some strange uh, visual illusions. Good. We also need 5,000 meters visibility. So some gotchas of this approach uh, is that this leg here, 3 miles to 10 miles, is only 7 miles long, of course. So it's not that far. You've got to lose 2,000 feet in that time or you're aiming to. So that's 2,000 feet at 3 degrees is 6 miles. So it's only it's about a 3 degree descent from the 3 mile point. You haven't got all the time in the world. And then also when you turn the corner here, you want to point in on the 008 radial or the 008 inbound I should say to the NDB uh, if you just turn you might find yourself inside or too far around you do actually have to monitor the needles and track it up there um, when we go visual it's quite straightforward and we'll use the automatics to help us out with that so let's load it into the box uh, we'll go to um, not there we'll go to flight plan select the airport arrival and I'm using the custom version of the fly-by-wire A32NX which has its own LNAV which is just so so good so NDB01, as I said, it is really an NDB approach, even though we start off using a VOR. So I'm going to select NDB01. I'm not going to worry about a star. That would just get us to that uh, VOR, the Scopolos VOR. But I am going to put in an approach via. If you don't do this, it will just have this last leg. It's not very good. So you need the SKP. So make sure you put the approach via, via SKP, which is that VOR, as we can see, SKP. And then insert. Great, and now you can see it actually is sequenced slightly wrong, but if we look on the navigation display, we'll go to plan, zoom in, and there it is, there's our approach. So SKP, D203 Charlie, out to 203 Juliet. So Charlie is three miles, um, A, B, C, it's the third letter of the alphabet, so it is three miles. J will be the 10th letter, so it is 10 miles. But you'll notice something slightly odd in the way it's drawn. So assuming, ignore this first green line, but we're going to head from SKP to D203 Charlie. So that is the radial 203 at a distance of three miles, which is this point here, 203, three miles out. Uh, and then the next one is 203, 10 miles out. You can see it's got the correct altitudes, 4,000, 2,000, but VNAD doesn't work, or I'm not going to use it for this video anyway. Um, but important to note is that the... Uh, turn down here you can see happens before we get to 10 miles whereas on the chart we need to actually go over the 10 mile point and then turn so we don't want to turn early if we turn early like this drawing you can see that it actually flies straight towards fq01 but it doesn't ever get onto that line earlier like it does on the chart so this would be really bad because you'd end up having to turn and then you'd be turning at the final approach fix and trying to see if you're visual and go around it'd be very high workload it's not how the approach is designed this is because the overflies aren't yet modeled. You can see it does actually show me the overfly because it's got a little triangle next to the D203 Juliet point. Um, that is uh, showing, but it's not correct. That means overfly. So in, in the real aircraft, if it had that little symbol, the line would actually go over that point and then make the turn, and then it would have intercepted. So if you want, you could just fly this in nav mode and let it fly these turns. Uh, in, in this sim not what you do in real life but i'm actually going to show you how we could do it properly using uh, the the aircraft's track fpa modes and that way we can fly the the approach correctly and bring it back out and in and it would be much more satisfying to do that um, than just to, to leave it in lnav anyway don't forget to finish loading up the box or the mcdu so go to perth and then scroll through and enter in the weather so we've got qnh 1013 temperature 15 degrees 2704 flat full landing of course because it's a short runway and barrow 1600 feet that is the minima which as we can see is 1600 feet which we'll remember from earlier next phase i'm going to put in the go around altitude of 4000 feet but don't worry too much about that one good there we go and what we can do now is turn back around and head towards the skp vor to begin the approach also due to the short runway of course we're going to go for medium auto brake and in real life, it's possible you'd need maximum or, uh, manual braking as well. It depends on the, the weight and the wind on the day. But we're going to go with medium for today. And uh, we know that that's going to work for us. So to sequence it correctly, I'm actually going to put direct to the Sierra Kilo Papa. We are a long way away because of uh, I've been filming outbound. And there we go. And put it into nav mode. 
and we're now pointing coming in from the north to fly that VOR as discussed. So let's finalize how we're going to do it. We're going to need to set up a couple of other things. We need to have this VOR tuned, the Scopolos VOR, and the Skiathos NDB. We're going to need both of those for the approach. So in your MCDU, go to RadNav, and then VOR, I'm going to put in the Sierra Kilo Papa, and I'm going to put it into both sides. Both pilots would probably want it in this approach. Uh, and then the NDB is the uh, Sierra Kilo Charlie. Now, I'm going to use VOR1 as the uh, Sierra Kilo Papa, so I'm going to put the NDB into number two. The reason I want to do this is I can't display two needles at once um, for the same thing. I can have VOR one set to I can have the number one side set to the VOR or the NDB. Now either's fine, and there are lots of ways to do this. But I'm going to have VOR one set up as Sierra Kilo Papa, and then I'm going to have my number two needle set to the NDB three two six, the Sierra Kilo Charlie. That way I've got both of those instruments tuned. Um, you could, however, put the Sierra Kilo Charlie into here number one. And then all you need to do is swap over when you're stopped using the, the VOR. But I'm going to do it this way for my own easiness. Then we also need the course. So we start the approach by flying outbound on 203 degrees of the VOR, um, as you can see there. So let's put 203 into this side. And of course, the other pilot would almost certainly have that as well. Uh, so there we go. So that's how we're going to start the approach. I'm going to fly over the VOR and then I'm going to head outbound on 203. Now this will work in lateral navigation because we've seen that it's coded it correctly and it has that. But what we're going to do is as we pass over the VOR, we're going to change or just before we'll change the track FPA. We'll pass overhead the VOR and then I'll put 203 and manually track outbound on that, uh, that VOR following the needles which we'll talk about as we go through it if you haven't seen my, my video on it but I do highly recommend watching that first if you're planning to fly this like this um, but if you just left it in nav mode it would also do the same thing so we'll track outbound get to three miles and then descend down to 2,000 feet I want to be slow as I do this so we'll be flap one 180 as we head over the VOR then we'll descend at three degrees and then before we get to 10 miles I'll go to flap two we'll turn the corner gear down flap three flap full just as we start down on this final segment assuming visual which I would really hope we are today so that's the configuring so we're going to be slower than normal so we don't get rushed into anything this is a slightly complicated approach we don't want to embarrass ourselves by speeding through it and that is the plan there are obviously terrain constraints 6,000 feet to the south based on the Sierra Kilo Charlie so that's based on this NDP over here um, so quite a high MSA so we do need to stay on this procedure or be visual to start flying around Okay, here we are then on the run into the approach. So here's the VOR. It's out on this uh, little bit of this island. That's where we're going to head out, background and in, and then Skiathos is sitting over there in that little bay. So things we need to do, of course, we need to activate the approach phase. Again, this is not a full tutorial on flying the Airbus. There's plenty of videos on my channel about those if you need any help with that. This would just be showing the specifics of this approach mostly. So back to the, the approach phase, I'm going to go to manage speed, which is the easiest thing in the Airbus. And of course, it just reduces back to green dot. And we're coming up to 10 miles to go to the Sierra Kilo Papa uh, VOR. So if you, if you leave it in nav, you'll see that it will just fly outbound on pretty much the correct um, radial. I've got my needle showing, which points me inbound towards Sierra Kilo Papa. So I've also got the NDB number two needle pointing at the Sierra Kilo Charlie, which is over on the island, basically at the airport. So what we're going to do then is leave it in nav and I'm going to actually cheat a little bit. We'll leave it in nav to track outbound initially. That way it will establish itself on the correct path and keep itself on the 203 degree outbound. Then when it's on that, I'm going to select track FBA and fly it myself because otherwise, as we said earlier, it will turn early on this green line, which we don't want it to do. But you could if you wanted to in the simulator just to help you get round to point at the FQ01. But we're going to do it properly and head outbound back in an intercept. Something as well to note, which we haven't talked about yet, is that when we are around the corner, this FQ01 isn't in line with the runway. We're actually going to be visual, and then at some point, while flying three degree descent, we need to move over to the left and then right to establish in onto the runway. There are some pappies, but they're not very visible. They're hidden behind uh, quite a lot of uh, trees and so on, which is usually they're not too hidden, but they are they can be pretty hard to see pappies, especially in a really sunny place. And obviously, it's a lovely, beautiful, sunny day here today in uh, in Greece. Right, here we are then arriving at the start of the approach. As we agreed then, I'm going to go to flap one now because I want to have this approach nicely under control. Don't want to have to rush any part of it. 
Three miles to go. We'll head outbound from Sierra Kila Papa. Reaching the Sierra Kila Papa now. If I put my uh, nav display to VOR, you can see because I put course 203 into the RadNav page in the box, it does line up that course bar to 203. So we get not only the white needle, but we have this really clear pictorial representation of where we need to be. So this means we need to be off slightly to the left to get this blue line in the middle. Once we pass overhead the VOR, that blue line will actually, the arrow will be the other way, it'll be behind us. So that's going to be another sort of backup we can use. But we could do it all just using this needle if you wanted to be uh, wanted to be fancy. So there we go, the needle disappeared because we're flying directly overhead to that VOR now, which uh, you'd probably be able to see. Um, that's going to be it there, I suspect. Uh, so we've gone overhead. Airplane will do a slight turn onto 203. I'm going to let it do that uh, if I put it into VOR. We can see now that blue needle is slightly behind and it's off to our right now. So we'll just let the airplane, it's very sensitive when we're this close in. You don't need to do anything too major. You can see the needle is pretty much on 203. So we're so close now, making any big change would be, would be silly. And that's coming back into line with where we want. So that's good news. So the next step was, remember, at three miles outbound, which is the D203 Charlie point, we want to descend. So we're at two miles to go. We've also got the DME, well, the DME is written down here, 2.3. So... What we'll do here is get ready. So I'm going to put 2,000 feet in the window. And there's three miles there. So let's put in the vertical speed. And I can put in 1,200. We can also, at this point, if I put in track FPA, we can still have it flying in nav mode. And I could just put three degrees in there, which we know will roughly work out to have us level at 2,000 feet before we make that turn. One final thing to point out is that FQ01 point, that is based on <laughs> not a lot it's based on an ndb but we don't get a distance until the ndb so it's on the 008 and it's about 4.8 miles from the runway 01 so if we put in the lg sk and i was very excited when this feature was added to the fly by wire and this is why put an lg sk 01 into there and when we are pointing back inbound i'll know that when i'm 4.8 miles away from the runway based on this which shows me my distance when i'm 4.8 miles pointing in towards it and on that 008 to the NDB, then I'll know I'm in the right place. So that's just something else we can use. Right, so you can see here in nav, it's going to start its turn. So I'm going to pull track and keep it going on the 203. Again, we can just use the white needle or if we wanted to do it very accurately or very clearly displayed, we can bring up the VOR page and you can see we are perfectly on the 203 heading outbound. And we're going to do this until 10 miles at the moment. We're at 6.8 and counting up. So our distance to the threshold now is about six miles away, but we're obviously facing in the wrong direction, so it's counting up. So when we turn back around the corner, we'll intercept the 008 to the NDB, and we'll look for 4.8 on there to know when we should begin our three-degree descent again. So that's, that's my top tip for this one, making sure you can do that, because the FQ01 is shown on the nav display as well, but that's a, another way to display it. Right, let's go to flap two then. So this turn is uh, definitely well below uh, 185 knots. And the speed will now naturally come back to the green F because we're in the approach phase activated. There's out star. Don't get too distracted now. You see that the needle started to go ever so slightly to the left. But if we start fiddling around, we're actually only half a mile from where we need to turn. So I don't want to get too excited or distracted by that. As long as we're within five degrees, we're, we're on the right, roughly in the right place. So there we go. There's 10 miles. So now I'm going to turn the track all the way around. And what I want to do is intercept the 308. Sorry, the 008. Sorry. Uh, 008 here so we're now here we're making this turn as you can see over here i can actually see the fq01 point on this screen if we put it in nav mode um, but we are just going to intercept something towards it so instead of going straight to 008 which is obviously not ideal i'm going to actually need to try and force that needle around so i'm going to cut on the left i want the green tip of this needle to say 008 at the moment it says what's that 356 so I need to go to the left of it to push it remember we're pushing the head back to where we want it so if I keep flying in this direction that green light that green needle will eventually go off to the right we can get a backup by looking over here and we can see actually yeah that is that is roughly pointing us to the FQ01 but it's not an aggressive of enough intercept I'll come left a little bit we also need to descend now to our 1600 feet so let's select hundreds of feet down to 1600 and I'll do that again with an FPA. Let's do an FPA of 2 degrees. And down we go. It's only 400 feet to lose, not a lot. So we'll keep intercepting like this. Make sure we've got everything else ready. Thing on the camera crew. Good. So as you can see, 
we're basically just doing the same thing as the FMS would have, but slightly further out, which will allow us to turn um, and intercept it more correctly. So now it's at 004, so we're getting pretty close within, within tolerances, really. Now it's at 005, so I'm going to start that turn. Let's initially go here. And we're only two miles from where we want to descend, so let's go gear down. Flap three. There's out star at 1600, which is our minimums. There's 008 now, so I'm going to put 008 on the screen. You can see 008 there. And 4.8, so at 5.1, we'll start our descent. So the question is, we're in the right place now. We are pointed on the 008. We are coming to the FQ point. Are we visual? Yes, we are. So let's get ready to descend at 3 degrees. 3 degrees is there. 5.1 there. So let's pull and go to flat full. The reason we pulled slightly early is because as we put out flat full, there's a bit of a balloon. So it helps by timing. and It takes the airplane a second to start going down. Good. Let's do the final thing then. Let's arm those ground spoilers. So that is um, all done. We're now descending three degrees. I'll put the going out shoot into the window in case we need it. You've obviously had to be visual to carry on this approach to this point. And if we look out the window, there's the runway. It's in the right place. And we just need to fly three degrees from here all the way down to landing. Now, that's slightly easier said than done, of course. But you can see we're not in line. So let's go autopilot off. Turn off the flight directors. And let's put in the runway track, which is actually 015. It's quite a way off. And now, as this is an Airbus, we can gently fly it to the left. And we keep the bird sitting on that five degree line, the bottom of the fuselage of the bird, somewhere sitting on the five degrees. And that means we're flying three degree approach. If we don't do anything to the pitch, it should stay roughly at three degrees because that's where it was when we, uh, when we set off. Right, so now let's bring the nose back round. And I eventually want to get that bird sitting on the 015, which will be this blue line on the PFD. Oh, we've gone slightly through there. That is the risk of taking big chunks out of things. <laughs> and hopefully we'll start to see the pappies come into play. So I think we're on three reds. So we'll just shallow out the approach a little bit till we get to two whites, two reds. It's not a very obvious approach. And here's where the narrow runway issue comes in. Narrow runways tend to look like you're a bit high, so we t tend to try and fly down a bit low, which is the, the risk of them. So you have to sort of force yourself not to be fooled by the visual illusion. We're also going to come right in over, the, uh, over that beach there, which makes for, a, makes for quite a fun approach. <laughs> There's two whites, two reds. So now we're going to put it back on three degrees, which is going to be about six to 700 feet per minute at this speed. We are very light. As you can see, quite hard to see those pappies, which is not uncommon in the, the real world, especially with the, the sun out. Just keep it coming down. Getting a little bit high, which is not what we want to do here. Correcting back to three degrees. There we go. 50, 40, 30, 20, retard. Idling. There's touchdown, reverses out, and let the medium water brake do its stuff so that's max reverse as we reach 70 knots bringing that to idle and now taking over with manual brakes we're not going to turn around on the runway it's too narrow so we'll have to go to the end and use the turning bay but there we go a very warm welcome to skiathos we have flown here before on the channel a little while back we've done it once in microsoft flight simulator and of course in x-plane but it's uh, it's good fun to revisit it and see some of the features that we've got now with the the flyby wire
as you can see, Orbex have modeled so much of this. I think I've actually got this wrong here. Yeah, I'm doing it probably what was the old turning bay. <laughs> but there is now a proper turning bay down at the end. You can see the old faded lines where they would have had old markings. See how the 1.9 has sort of black around it? That's probably because it's changed idents at some point. Um, so I like that. that this feels like a really lived-in runway. Um, and it has all the, the markings in, and variations that you would expect. Because, of course, these things don't stay perfect forever. They get constantly used and changed around and repainted. As we arrive back in at the terminal now and you can see some of the details of the Orbex scenery. We've got the classic 2E uh, 757 parked up. It looks like a Jet 2 737. So the sort of holiday making aircraft that you'd expect to see here. We'll get our flaps in and get all our lights off, get that APU up and running. It's got lots of bumps in the taxiways as you can feel there. It feels like that's almost a follow me vehicle but I won't try and park on that stand. Let's go for stand number four. This is the commercial stand. Again you can see the, the blacked out lines and so on where they've been moved and so that sort of thing happens when they're trying to make sure that a, a, a uh, an airport has the right distances for wingtips and so on so this is where we'll leave our a320neo and let's head over and explore some of the airport and the scenery as you can see lots and lots of different ground vehicles all sort of bumbling around in the right place and the default microsoft flight simulator stuff but here is some of the orbex style additional aircraft a really nice looking 2e757 parked up here which you have, will see the videos online if you want to of them coming in here i think there's some good videos of embraers as well jet 2737 parked up so all the stands are done accurately this has been updated not only do you get the updated airport but you also get the whole island they've increased the resolution i believe of the ground scenery added some airports and uh sorry airports added some hotels and other parts to it to give it that extra sense of life this is again that thing i always say in, in sceneries that i enjoy is where they feel like a diorama so we've got our passengers boarding here ready to leave the sunshine and go back to presumably the uk in a jet to airplane and uh, perhaps sit in the rain i i wanted to make this video at this time of year because of course it's uh it started to go cold and a bit gray in the uk and it's nice to to come and revisit the summer holiday flights that we like to do on these channels or on this channel i should say then we got the, looks, looks like the fuel area, fuel bowser loading up, even got the little connected pipe, which I really like. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> uh, so that's uh, there. That's quite good fun. And the details continue. They've got a detailed air side and land side part to the airport. So they've got the bags being taken off shortly, um, either being delivered to an airplane or taken off an airplane. I'm not sure which. So more baggage security camera. <laughs> I like that detail. And then here's the tower. Again, all looking very nice, very, very relevant. We've got the PPR texturing and just so many 3D modeled parts. I really can't believe what we have now in, in simulators. It, it's quite impressive. And this looks like all the different air conditioning ducts. Look at that, even the fan spinning. <laughs> I like that. Very good. Yeah, any sort of added animations are always appreciated by me, certainly. Then we've got a sort of land side area. Passengers waiting, hopefully waiting for their bus to take them to their lovely hotels to go and enjoy the sunshine and not back or having not just been dropped off to join the queues to go home again. Um, yeah, all the signage, bus stops, everything all updated as per the pictures of the real airport, I believe. Lots and lots of car models placed all around. Got a real nice feel to it. Very, very impressed with the airport itself. And the detail just goes on and on and on. It is quite a small airport, of course. So there's not, um, not a whole lot uh, of, of terminal buildings, which I suppose would explain why you get the um, extra added bonus of having the uh, whole island included in this package i know we've started to see airports in simulators that have the full sort of uh, departures gates and all that sort of stuff that's not included on this one from what i can tell i believe uh, well part of the reason is going to be it's not a very big glass terminal building like we're used to seeing in some of the larger airports so it's not going to have good views of the airplanes or anything like that as you can see the commercial jets park up all the way over there so the the terminal itself is is more of an exterior model to have but like i say complemented by these details of of the sort of sense of action going on with all the mannequins in the right place which I, I do really like what we'll do now then is let's head over look at the roads it is amazing really really very impressed with that let's head over and look at the spotters area so this is the famous part of skiathos airport for anyone interested in aviation it's the sort of the the road that leads to the threshold for runway 01 so they've got a whole load of spotters sat here even with a camera which i really like set up on the fence risky place to be um if you were taking off in a large aircraft from here, there is even the sign, the obvious sign that you need, which is danger. Please keep away from aircraft blast. 
really they're incredibly powerful you don't want to be any closer than that and i wouldn't even know if i'd stand that close i think you see videos of people ducking behind this exact wall so i do like that that's uh, that's been done really nicely and is instantly recognizable to those of you who've uh, who've been seeing those videos online another nice touch about this area is you've got all the boats loaded in which is good like this one's even named skiathos or registered to this port with a crane on board so it's it's got loads and loads of little details and this just goes on and on as you head around and into the town boat with a mast is always obligatory for any runway near the water there's usually a no tam or some sort of warning about the fact that there could be ships with tall masts now they're supposed to be no tamed if they are in the way uh, and they might change the performance or something but they can often just be distracting so you're coming in on the approach and then you just see this this tall tall mast getting closer and closer um typically on a boat that size obviously no problem but the detailing goes on and on as i said so you've got loads of nice texturing on all these different sort of buildings this looks like a little taverna that's been built up that looks lovely doesn't it imagine sitting there and that is a serious that is a serious beer <laughs> that he is enjoying while watching the the aircraft came in, come in on their uh, their approach good fun really nice detailing even got knives and forks unbelievable Plenty more tavernas along the waterside as we head in towards the town, making me very, very upset that I'm not on a holiday right now. It looks absolutely lovely. So yeah, it's uh, somewhere I've, I've never been um, on holiday in Skiathos, so it's somewhere I'd love to love to go and visit. I've, I've seen it so much in simulators. And then we come down to the main sort of promenade, we'd call it in the UK, the sort of the harbour, and looks absolutely lovely as well with the big Hellenic Seaways ferry ready to head off. Lots of ferries in Greece, of course, because so many islands, it would make sense. And then we've got some passengers waiting here with their bags, perhaps having come off one of our flights to head to an even smaller local island. So this is just a, to show you, you know, that the whole town is built here. We've got monuments, we've got the um, vehicles, and then we've also got, um, hopefully, the hotels. I'm going to go and see if I can find any. I found the hotel with some rather nice sunbeds sitting here. So that's uh, another reason to, <laughs> to make you want to go on holiday. I'm sorry if you're watching this sitting in the gloom or the cold, but uh, yeah, there you go. A lovely beach resort with some sunbeds out and then as we go up over the island, you'll see there's there's more towns, more hotels, modelled, different little bays and so on. Oh, this one looks nice. That would be all right, wouldn't it? Sitting up there. Although I'm probably more of a beach person myself than a swimming pool, I must say. So I'd be uh, I'd be walking down to this little beach here, jumping in the water. Yeah, absolutely lovely. And the the whole island's done. Yeah, so you get the whole island with this Orbex package. So improved resolution on the the photography and then the details of the the hotels and the uh, scenery, as we said. Of course, this is a scenery video, so we need to take a look at it at night and check out the night lighting. So here you go. We've got the floodlights for the apron, which is what you'd expect to have, all looking very nice. And again, as you'd expect, with an add-on of this quality, you'd expect to have the taxiway lightings. And here they are, the blue lights signifying the edge of the taxiways. There's the very clear red runway sign, i.e. don't go any further. You're going to enter the runway if you do. Very important. And you can see, of course, the runway lighting and the red end of runway lights over there. Terminal is all lit as you'd expect and what I quite like is that even the bus has its lights on so uh, yeah these passengers unfortunately look like they are arriving or boarding the bus to go to their airplane and not not arriving on holiday but look at that even the little orange lights along the side of the bus which you get of course uh, on long, longer vehicles that's really nice towers lit so there is someone in the tower even at night which is good news and then the more floodlit uh, apron area sorry parking area let's go and head over and take a quick look at the town. So again, no surprise, it looks absolutely lovely, even with the, looks like a church of some variety, all lit up perfectly for the evening. Wouldn't that just be a lovely place? Although you would definitely want to have your mosquito repellent with you for a, a night out like this, especially if it's uh, earlier in the evening. But yeah, fantastic. So that's all for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. These uh, approaches are always good fun for me to have a go at. So uh, do please leave your feedback if you'd like to see more and what ones you might like to see. But this one I couldn't resist, especially with the release of the new Orbex, Orbex scenery to try out. 
There's gonna be plenty more guides and live streams on the channel coming soon. So do please subscribe if you'd like to see more of those. And we'll see you again in another video or live stream very soon. Thank you for watching, bye-bye.